Thresholds are one of the more powerful features of OpenNMS, but they're also one of the least well understood. I'm going to demonstrate a relatively quick and easy way to configure a threshold and send notifications when that threshold is exceeded entirely within the OpenNMS web interface. This method will work with any release as 1.6.0. From the admin menu, select Manage Thresholds. You can create the threshold in any group that makes sense to you. I'm using a group I created called Video Demo. To keep it short, we're going to configure a basic threshold. Expression-based thresholds are good for more sophisticated scenarios, and they work almost exactly the same way. The fields for creating a threshold can be a bit daunting at first, but they're really straightforward. Our threshold will be for the percentage of utilized space on a file system, so we'll leave the type set to the default, high. The data source, data source type, and data source label fields specify which collected performance data will be compared against our threshold. These fields are the hardest to understand, so I'll come back to those in a moment. The value field contains the value at which the threshold will be considered exceeded. For our file system utilization percentage example, I'll set the value at 80. The rearm field contains the value at which the threshold will rearm or clear. I'm going to set that at 70. Finally, the trigger field specifies how many consecutive samples must be above the value parameter for the threshold to be considered exceeded. So what about those three data source fields that we skipped earlier? I'll open a new browser tab and show you how to find the appropriate values. In the main nav strip at the top of the OpenNMS web UI, click on Reports, then on Resource Graphs. From the lower list of Custom Resource Performance Reports, select a node that is representative of those you want this threshold to apply to. I'm interested in Linux systems with the NetSNMP agent, so I'm choosing one of my file servers. Click the Submit button to move on. The next page is divided into a number of sections, each of which pertains to a resource of a certain type. We could choose any of these, but for file systems on Linux, we'll look under the Disk Table Index Resource Type. In the list box for that resource type, we see that instances are available for the root or slash file system, for slash boot, and for a few others. We'll pick the root file system and click Submit. Now that we've selected our file system resource, we can look at the URL in the browser's address bar. There's a lot of URL escaped stuff in there, but near the end you'll see the token DSK index, or for disk index. I've just highlighted it here. Make a note of what that is, go back to our first tab, bring down the drop down for data source type, and locate that type in there. Here it is, DSK index. Returning to the second tab, there's quite a bit of stuff here available to work with. For this demo, all we really care about is the first list of data sources. The first item in that list, NS disk percent, is the name of the data source that we want. The data source names tend to be short but descriptive. Make a note of that data source name, copy it to my clipboard, go back to the other tab, and paste it into the field for data source. The data source label field is not strictly required, but filling it in can make you much more popular with the people whose pagers will be going off at 3 o'clock in the morning. This field should contain the name of a data source that holds a description of the resource to which the threshold pertains. For our Linux file system example, we look back at the second tab and see that NSDSK path looks like a good candidate for a data source label. Back to the threshold definition, and we're done with the required parts of the threshold. Since we're going to use events generated by this threshold to create notifications, though, let's do another optional step to ease the configuration of those notifications. In the Triggered UEI field, enter an event identifier that incorporates your organization's domain name and describes what kind of situation the event describes. For the fictional case of Acme Inc., we'll just use uei.acme.com slash threshold slash disk slash linux slash utilization slash exceeded. For the rearmed UEI, we'll copy that UEI that we just made up and paste it and we'll change that last bit from exceeded to rearmed. Click on save and you're totally done building the threshold. In the list of thresholds, we now see the one that we just created. Note that the text in the triggered UEI column is a hyperlink. Clicking that link takes us into the notification wizard workflow. We don't need to adjust any parameters in this first page and we can skip the validation of our rule for this demo. Give the notification a name
and a description. I usually just put the same value for both. Pick the destination path you want the notices to go to. Right now we've only got one, so our choice is simple. Now we need to fill in the text message, which will inform the body of most of the notices sent for this notification. I'm going to use some substitution tokens, which will be expanded to values specific to this threshold we just configured. The short message field becomes the message body for notices sent via pager or SMS text. Click Finish. From now on, we'll receive an email notice anytime a file system monitored by a net SNMP agent exceeds the utilization threshold. It'll look something like this. When we receive that notice, we can log into the OpenNMS web UI, check our notices, and acknowledge it. Uh-oh, my Wii is also down. Better go check that out. Now some people will say that this method is a bit clunky and requires a certain degree of nerd cred. You're the one watching a video on the internet about OpenNMS. Look for a less manual way of accomplishing the same thing in a future release. Thanks for watching.